Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan, out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a place called Sherfield on Loddon in North Hampshire. It's located around about five miles to the north of Basingstoke and about 12 miles to the south of Reading. It's just off the A33 that bypasses it. And today we're going to be doing a roughly five mile circular walk, starting and finishing in the village. Uh, we'll be seeing a, a lot of beautiful open countryside, fingers crossed, and I'll explain shortly. Um, we'll be seeing a couple of rivers, a couple of moats, and I dare say a few other interesting things along the way. Now I'm filming in the middle of October. Uh, the temperature is perfect. Uh, it's going to be dry, but as you can probably tell, it is quite cloudy. So it could be a bit dark in the picture on occasions, but fingers crossed the sun will come out later on. So do join us. Well, I've parked my car at a free car park uh, just off Bramley Road. And the main part of the village centres around uh, an open area called Sherfield Green, which is just behind me here and in fact just on the right hand side here there's an avenue of horse chestnuts along Bramley Road and that apparently I was reading uh, those replaced some lime trees that were damaged soon after they were planted to commemorate Edward VII's coronation in 1901. So just panning around uh, this is the direction we're initially going to, to head have a little wander through the village first. It gets its name, uh, Sherfield on Loddon, um, from Skirafelt, which means bright open land. Of course, it's on the banks of the river Loddon, which runs to the north. We'll be seeing that later. OK, so the road we're going to basically follow is called Reading Road, which goes through the village. And that's the first pub there, the White Hart pub late 17th century, early 18th century. And uh, we're kind of heading on a sort of southerly direction. We've got a busy little road that uh, goes through. A little crossroads here. So there's the car park on the right hand side. And then over on the left here, we've got the coffee shop. And that's probably going to be our final destination. And there's pub number two, the Four Horseshoes, which uh, dates from the 16th century with 19th century alterations. As you can see, a timber frame building with later brick cladding. And next to it, you've got this rather wonderful building, the former stables and uh, coach house. And clearly at one stage, it would have been uh, a coaching inn, as this was the old main road from Reading to Basingstoke until the A33 bypass was built in 1974. And opposite the Four Horseshoes is uh, the old schoolhouse built in 1757. And it consisted of a schoolroom and a schoolmaster's house. It closed as a school in 1958. And this is the last thing that we're looking at in the village. It's the village hall. It was originally six cottages and then the middle four were changed to become the village hall in 1909 with the two ends remaining as residential. We've now made our way off the sort of main road that goes through the village and going down a little lane called Goddard's Lane. We've still got this uh, Sherfield Green to one side. And this is gonna take us out into the countryside I hope that sun does come out in the end. <laughs> well, we made our way to the end of Goddard's Lane and carried up a, what looks like a, a dead end track and then taken, not the first, but the second footpath sign on the left. And that's now gonna take us southwards uh, through some quite gorgeous countryside. Initially, just on the side of some uh, recently um, cultivated fields. Well, 
I've been making my way up the side of this field and just spotted something quite interesting uh, just on my left hand side. Hopefully you'll be able to see it through the, <laughs> through the gloom, but there's an embankment there and it's actually the embankment of a, an old moat and a fortified house stood on this spot from around about the 12th century until 1572 when it was replaced by a Tudor house on the outer edge of the moat and we'll see that later on. Hopefully we'll see the moat later on as well but that's the embankment anyway. And this is St Leonard's Church. It's a 14th century building almost wholly restored in 1866 and little remains of the original building. There's a chancel with a small vestry and organ chamber on the north side, and a nave with a north transept, and a southwest tower built in 1871, 1872, and the lower part uh, serves as the porch. The oldest part is the bay of the north wall of the nave with a, a blocked off door. And as you can see, it looks like there's a, a much newer, perhaps a little chapel on the left hand side there. But the church is quite some way from the main village. I, I wonder if it was deserted after the plague in the 14th century or was it just that work developed further north? I know there are four mills, well there were four mills in the area in the early 1600s. And just behind the church on the northern side, again poking through the vegetation, look there is the, the moat still of the old manor house and it's uh, you know, quite a substantial bit of bit of water as well. So let's have a, a little explore. I say we've got the church on the northern side. Oh there's a, a slightly better view of the moat over there. <laughs> and it's populated by a fair few ducks as well. Well, I've just left the church and crossed the very busy A33. We're going to start heading uh, eastwards down a, hopefully a quiet lane. But just as we crossed the road, I noticed this lovely building. I think it's called Lefebvre. Originally a 18th, 19th century uh, building. It was a pub, but uh, ceased to be a pub in the 1950s and now a, a residential house. So we're at a place called Church End. Um, a telephone box with no telephone in it. Ah, I just noticed uh, what we got down here. Looks like, well, <laughs> one, two, three little rabbits. I think that's what they are. I'll keep Logan away from them, whatever. <laughs> Aha, Sheffield on Lodden Garden Centre. And it's got a cafe. Always useful to know if you want a pit stop at halfway. Now this is a fascinating house here called Lantern House. I know we can only see the top of it, but uh, I was reading that, uh, well, it was an old prefab bungalow that was converted to a, well, this magnificent oak frame Tudor style house in 2006. And it was made from 168 oak trees imported from sustainable forests in France and Germany. <laughs> so there you go, sometimes things aren't quite as old as they look. <laughs> Wish I could say the same about myself. Now this is a, an important part of the route if you're going to be following this and doing it later. Uh, look out for a footpath sign to the left with uh, assigned to, amongst others, a place is called Searchers. And uh, we're now going to start heading in a sort of northerly direction along this track initially. <laughs> Goodness gracious me, what have we got here? It looks like a, a very old ash tree that's literally covered with gnomes. <laughs> Now that's obviously got some sort of story. I wonder what it's all about. <laughs> well, look at him. This is just a few yards on from the, uh, the gnome tree. A little chap here with Wellington boots. Now I did see on a, 
on a map that this little track is called the Welly Wash. So I'm guessing it's got something to do with that. I don't know. Well, we'll uh, continue on anyway, I think. Uh, oh, look, it looks like a, a sheep there that's resting on uh, that fence. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there's some very odd things around here. I think we'll move on quickly. Well, just passing the aforementioned property called Searchers, which is just on my right. Again, I was reading, that gets its name from the fact that apparently in the Second World War, they used to house lorries here that um, carried searchlights. We're continuing to head northwards uh, along this uh, lovely little path that's taking us through a little wooded section. And on one side, there's a, a golf course, the Sherfield Oaks Golf Course. Quite new, I think it was established in about 2004. I think there are two courses, one called the Wellington Course and the other called the uh, Waterloo Course. But <laughs> the fairway literally is only about 30, 40 yards away. So we're keeping our heads low because uh, Logan's found uh, not one, not two, but three golf balls <laughs> and we've only been walking about 60 yards. <laughs> it's better fun than chasing squirrels, that's for sure. rather magnificent building over there is Lance Levy Farmhouse. I think I've pronounced Lance Levy correctly. It's uh, a Warwickshire family name. And uh, well, there was a, a building, whether it was that one or one just behind it, built with a moat around it. We might be able to see the moat later on. I'm just panning around. Look at this lovely barn there on the Staddle Stones. Lovely just made my way behind Lance Levy farmhouse to the north and sure enough just in front of me here I can well just about make out uh, the remains of the moat so it's not quite as um, impressive as the one that uh, uh, was at Sherfield Church but uh, certainly some terrific uh, bull rushes there aren't there. Okie doke so we're going to continue uh, making our way eastwards across this uh, little field here. The sun has come out at last. Now we're coming to a bridge and this is going to take us to our first river of the day, the, uh, the River Loddon. And uh, about 28 miles long, it's uh, a tributary of the River Thames and uh, its source is, uh, oh, Basingstoke Way, I think. So, Oh, there's quite a, a good flow to it as well. And then I dare say we'll get some more glimpses of it as we go along. But basically what we're going to do now is follow uh, the banks of the river for a wee while. And that's going to take us to our next river. Two rivers very close to each other. What a, an enchanting River, the River Loddon is. Quite a, 
quite chalk streamy I would say. There's a bit of a, a gravel bottom to it. And, uh, well, there is a, a sort of dog dip here, but it's a little bit uh, chilly for Logan to try that one out today. And there are some sheep further along here as well. So I've actually got him on a, a lead. Just trying to see if I can see any fish in there because it's quite clear. It's a very, um, very clear bottom. But as rivers go, I'd be quite taken by this one, you know. Well, we're just about to uh, meet our second river of the walk. So the River Loddon is on the other side of the field behind me. And to the north of it, I'll just slowly pan round. We're about to cross a little bridge and this is the River Lide. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's only six and a half miles long and it uh, rises to the southwest of Basingstoke, uh, a little um, village called uh, Maple Durwell. And in fact, it, um, it joins up with the River Loddon not too far from here. What a lovely little thatched property over on the other side of the road here. And then uh, just as we cross the river, and that's uh, looking further upstream. We've now made our way to the little hamlet of uh, Hartley Westpool. And if you're following this route, important to look out for uh, a little bridge very close to a post box and a bus shelter. And so we're gonna take the bridge here that uh, a little sign there that says it's been installed by North Hampshire Downs Ramblers Group, <laughs> for which we are eternally grateful. Otherwise our feet would get a little bit damp. Well, we're very much on the homeward leg now, heading back towards uh, Sherfield on Loddon. I've got um, Hartley Wood on my right. We're shortly going to join up with a, um, a footpath route called the Brenda Parkaway. Now that's a 78 mile long distance path that goes all the way from Aldershot to Andover. And uh, it was created in uh, 2008, I think, by the North Hampshire Downs Ramblers group in memory of Brenda Parker, who was a, a group member. And I, I believe she wrote a, a number of books on uh, walking in Hampshire. And the, the waymark signs for the route, I've got the picture of a chaffinch on it. Uh, she was a, a great lover of birds. Just about to come back into uh, Sherfield on Loddon. You can probably hear the dulcet tones of the A33 in the background. But just a couple of things to look at before we get back to the village. And just behind me here is uh, Flood's Farm with a delightful little pond and uh, wooden uh, building next to it. But what I want to show you is, I don't know if you can make out just in the distance there, almost in the back garden, is a pillbox from the Second World War, and I think it's a, a Type 22, but uh, it looks as though it's purposely been built fairly tall, possibly in an effort to prevent flooding when the river levels rise. I'm not 100% sure. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like, and do leave a comment. The sun, well, it did make a brief appearance from time to time, but the temperature today has been spot on for a walk. We're off now to the coffee house for some light refreshment. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Good boy. Well, folks, we're back in the village at the coffee shop 
which I believe has won an award, the uh, Basingstoke Advertiser and Andover Gazette Cafe of the Year 2021. So definitely worth checking out their coffee and a cake, and don't worry. He always gets something.